You know when you watch someone just sit down and play chords, maybe all they have is a basic chord chart, or they're playing the song for the first time, or when you see a performer who plays their songs a little differently each time. They always add something to the piano part or improvise with it. Well, I remember that that kind of thing used to look like a complete magic trick. How do you know what to play? Now, I can only be honest, it does take experience. There's not one quick secret I can tell you and all of a sudden you can just play anything you want. It doesn't work like that, unfortunately, but with this video, I just wanna pull back the curtain a little bit. I wanna give you a few practical things that you can try as a starting point. No video could teach you everything. There's an infinite amount of things that you could do from fairly simple up to Jacob Collier levels, and nobody knows it all. But what you need to do is build a vocabulary of things that you can play starting simply. So if you already have a little bit of practical experience with chords and you're not sure what to do next, Hopefully this video will give you a bit of inspiration and some confidence to get started. First off, we're gonna need a chord progression and to learn some simple positions to play those chords in as a starting point, which we can then elaborate upon and play around with. I've chosen this four chord loop. This one is in the key of D minor, and the first chord is a D minor chord. And we're gonna play it like this in the right hand, just a regular root position. For the left hand, we are just gonna play the D and the A. And it's useful to call this the root and the fifth. So if you imagine the whole chord, we have the root, the third, and the fifth. So we're just playing the outside two, the root and the fifth. And this is one of the common ways that we position our left hand when we're playing chords. Now musicians often refer to notes as the root and the fifth, for example, instead of using the note names, because it helps us describe playing other chords with different notes in the exact same way. You'll, you'll see what I mean as we go. The next chord is B flat major. And in our right hand, all we have to do from the D minor is raise the top note up to B flat. Those two chords only have one note different between them. So that creates a nice movement. And this is a first inversion position I'm playing for the B flat. All an inversion really is, is playing the notes of the chord in a different order. So if I take the regular root position B flat, I'm just playing the B flat on top instead of below. I'm just switching that B flat for that B flat. So it's usually good to play a mixture of positions when you're playing a chord progression because it helps you flow through them, kind of sounds a lot smoother and a lot more musical. As opposed to just jumping around in root positions. So for the left hand, I'm gonna be using octaves, which is the root doubled at the top. And then I might sometimes play the fifth in the middle as well. So if there's our regular B flat chord, there's the root, there's the third, and there's the fifth. So I've got the root, the fifth, and the root again on the top. Now the third in the minor chord, we'd call a minor third, and the third in the major chord, we'd call a major third. Now we don't always need to distinguish between the two, so we might just use the generic term of a third to cover both of them if that's all we need. So playing octaves in the left hand and sometimes with the fifth as well is a really common and useful position to practice. The third chord is an F major, and we're gonna start off by playing it in second inversion position in our right hand. So all that is, well there's root position, I'm gonna rearrange the notes once, gives me first inversion, and I rearrange the notes again, and it gives me second inversion. It's the same notes in a different order, so it is still the same chord. I've still got my F as the lowest note, the root of the chord, which is important as well. And once again in my left hand, I'm using the octaves, and I may sometimes use the fifth in the middle, and that kind of helps create a bit of a fuller sound. And by the way, if you can't reach an octave, if it's a struggle, don't worry, you can just play the low note or just the root and the fifth. That works just as well. 
And the last chord then is a C major, which we're just gonna play in root position again in the right hand and use the root and the fifth in the left hand. So we're playing this in the same way that we played the D minor. And just to point out, I could use octaves as well for that C if I wanted, but that gives me a much deeper sound, which I might not always want. You could use octaves for the whole time if you want a big sound, for example. But that's a musical choice that you have to make. Now we've got a starting point for our chord progression, we can look at some ways to make things a little bit more musical and start experimenting with those chords. So for each thing I wanna talk about, I'll explain briefly how it works so you understand the logic of what's happening, and then I'll do a demo so you can see exactly what I mean and get some idea starters. So the first thing is to play basic rhythms and break up the notes of the positions that we've already learned. So before we start trying to jump around different chord positions, which can be a little bit trickier, it's useful to start just using the positions that you've already learned. To keep things simple, we're just gonna start off by concentrating on the right hand and leave the left hand doing what you were already doing. So even just with these positions in the right hand, we have a lot of options that we can play with. So when I say breaking up the notes and playing rhythms, I'm talking about things like hitting the chord more than once for a start. Something like that. And then within that chord, we can do things like play the top two notes followed by the low one. We can break up the notes individually as well and pick out individual notes. So I hope you get the basic logic of this. I'm really just picking out notes from the position I'm on at the time. Now I'll show you some examples. I'm just gonna try and do a variety of things to show you. Of course, if you are actually kind of crafting a song or playing along with other musicians, you wouldn't wanna play so many different things most of the time. You wanna play something that fits with the music, but this is just an, an example to show you the kind of things that you can do. noticed I was using the sustain pedal when I was playing there to help things sound a little bit more fluid and essentially I was just keeping the pedal down on each chord but lifting it up and down as the chords change. If you want to learn how to use the pedal with chords I did a really detailed video on that I'll link in the pinned comment below. So as I'm playing things like that I'm improvising really I'm using those positions as a guide but within that, within those constrictions, I'm using my ears to help create the rhythms and the patterns. And that's just one of those things that kind of takes a little bit of experience and experimentation with to improve that. Now you just wanna make sure that when you do this, that you're aiming to land on the next chord at the right time. So for example, with this, we've got two beats per chord. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So you're doing something to kind of fill the space between the chords changing. So we were really just talking about the right hand there. I'll just quickly mention the left hand, although I don't really wanna focus on that in this video. I do have other videos on rhythm patterns between the two hands, but if you do wanna have a go in the left hand, I would suggest just starting with perhaps the low note in the left hand, although you can use the other notes as well, but this might be a good starting point to perhaps create some basic rhythms like this.
The next thing you can try is using a mixture of positions to play each chord. So to start with, that just means using some different inversion positions. Instead of just sticking to these positions we've been using so far, well, we could start just by trying the next positions up from there for each chord. So we could use the first inversion in the right hand for the D minor, same left hand still, to the second inversion of the B flat, root position this time for the F, and first inversion for the C. And that immediately gives us a different sound than we had before. It's kind of higher up on the piano, a bit of a brighter sound. But we don't have to stop there. We could, if we get comfortable with a few places we can go nearby for each chord, then we can mix and match and we can decide whether we want to move kind of in an upwards direction from chord to chord or in a downwards direction for each chord and each time you vary that it kind of creates a different feel for the chords almost like they move slightly melodically different in a way so an example of mixing that up would be this if we played them like this one time round and then the second time round So all I did there was play the second two chords up higher. But I could have gone um, or or there's all these different ways that you could manipulate the chords to create these different movements. You can even try changing positions whilst you're on a chord. And once you do get comfortable finding a few different positions for each chord, then you can combine that with what we were doing in the last section and break up the notes and create patterns in different positions as well. The next thing to try is incorporating other notes other than the three notes in the chord that you're playing at the time. Now when I say using extra notes, you can think about this in a couple of ways, but at first I'm talking about using them in your broken chord patterns to help create these nice melodic links to connect the chords. But how do you know which notes to use? Remember I said this chord progression was in the key of D minor, so we're going to look at the D minor scale. Every chord we're using in this instance only uses notes from that D minor scale. Now, other things can happen in music too. We can use other notes and we have chord progressions that do other things, but this is a good starting point. So when we're playing the D minor chord, we have these other notes from the D minor scale surrounding the notes from the chord. So you can try using those in some way before you land on the next chord. And you can do this on every chord. So if you're playing the B flat, you've got to picture the notes surrounding that chord that are from the scale, and you can find ways to use them to get from the B flat to the F. Now, when you're first starting out, make sure that you practice the chord positions first and look at them and think of them, picture them on the piano like a framework that you're then decorating with the surrounding notes. That'll keep you kind of grounded and focused where you're going. 
Now you can do complicated patterns, but I suggest just starting as simple as you can, even just with single notes to help you explore what works and what you like and to get comfortable with each chord. Now I know I'm playing a lot of stuff there, it's just for the sake of giving you lots of examples, but I hope you can see the logic of what I'm doing. Now it's easier said than done to do this, but it's good to start from a place just where it makes sense. So I'm really just using the chord positions that we've practiced as a framework and finding ways to break up those notes and occasionally using notes in between to connect the chords. What you can do though to get going, because it's difficult to do it in real time to start with, is do some out of time practice. So all that means is you're on one chord and take as long as you need to figure out what you're gonna do and find a path to the next chord. So on the D for example, you might do this. So I'm using the C with the chord there and then land on the B flat. Give yourself some thinking time. To the F. Some thinking time, pause here. So at first you can try a bunch of different stuff out to get comfortable, but a word of caution is when you're actually playing along with a real song, you don't wanna to do too much. You do have to bear in mind what else is happening in the song. You've gotta try and find something that really does fit with the music. You don't want it to get in the way of the main melody. Sometimes playing in the gaps is a good approach. And you wanna be careful that any particular notes at particular moments don't clash with anything else. Stuff like that takes some practice and trial and error, but you get quicker at it with experience. Now we can also just add notes to the chord and play them together, which adds some more color to the sound. For, for instance, adding this C onto the D minor chord. Now we can call that a D minor seven chord. By learning different kinds of chords and learning about numbers and things um, in music theory, you're gonna open up other options like this. But for now, you can just kind of try different things out and get familiar with what works for each chord. Adding on the seventh is a good one to try, so I'll show you that now. If you take any of the chords that we're playing, you look at the root and you find the note underneath that in the scale. So underneath D, we have a C. You add the C on, and then you could do that for the B flat. Underneath the B flat is the A. Underneath the F would be E, add that on. And underneath the C in the scale would be B flat. So you could play this. Essentially that's seven notes on through the scale from the root of the chord. So if we're on the B flat, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes through the scale. That is a very simplified version of that to help you find the right note for the chord for that song. Of course, I've got proper seventh chord videos on the channel. It's really helpful to learn about chords in the right way. And I've got PDF theory guys on the website as well, which you can get. All that stuff will be linked down below. Now, exactly how you choose to play each chord comes down to your ears really, but with practice and a bit of experimentation, you can get familiar with a few things that you know will work and things that you like. So it's kind of like building up a vocabulary. And of course, picking out things that you hear other musicians do, things that you've learned from other songs is one of the best ways to build that vocabulary. Imitation is key to learning music. Then even slight variations of those things on the fly is improvising, adjusting a note, adjusting the kind of rhythm, 
that's how a lot of improvisation works. We're linking pre-absorbed ideas together in different ways. I do just quickly want to point out to avoid any confusion that if you are playing a chord that contained one or more notes that weren't in the key, so if we were using a chord here that was that had a note not in the D minor scale, then you do have to factor that note in and which note of the scale that that has replaced. Although it can be a bit more complicated than that as well, sometimes you kind of change key, but this is just a simple example to get you started. I just didn't want you to think that you only ever use the notes from that scale. And you can make notes outside of the scale work as well, but you want to practice the kind of easier notes to use first. I do want to very quickly mention grace notes. I haven't got time to cover that properly in this video, but they are a really good way to kind of inject some soul into your playing. It's not always appropriate, of course, it depends on the style, but if you do wanna see a video on how to do that, then let me know by hitting the thumbs up button and putting it in the comments below. I hope that was helpful. Next, you should check out this video where you can learn four soulful chord rhythm patterns. I'm gonna drop a link below as well for the mailing list, for the newsletter, if you wanna sign up to that. And I think next week on Patreon, I'm gonna post a demo for a different chord progression to this. So you can check that out too. Thanks for watching.